Hi guys, it's Still Jan here, and uh, I'm going to do a couple of things today. I got something to show you, uh, but first we got to pour a beer, don't we? Yes, we have to pour a beer. Hang on a second. Uh, I'll get my glass. Now stay tuned because this is going to be an exciting episode. I've got something I'm really excited to show you, and no, it's not the beer. But anyway, let's go pour a beer. Today's beer is not in the kegerator. It is in the supplemental beer fridge because. This needs to be a lot colder than uh, than my kegerator. I keep my kegerator at 46, and so I don't know what the temperature is in this fridge, but it's much lower. Today's beer is Munton's um, American Style Light Beer. Munton's American Style Light Beer. I hope I got that set up right. So here, yeah, is the Munton's American Style Light Beer. And uh, I'll give you a close-up on it. So you can see, very nice. Hang on, let me get the outside. Yeah, like very nice, clear beer. Very beautiful. Nice carbonation. Cold, clear, beautiful. And that doesn't mean diddly squat to me. <laughs> because as I keep saying, what I go for in a beer is taste and uh, aroma. Well, this beer is probably too cold to have much for taste and aroma. But actually, I'd like it even colder because I kind of like to erase the taste. It smells uh, beery, clean and beery, like an American light beer would smell. But uh, here's the taste. It's, it's okay, it's a drinkable beer, but um, I'm gonna tell you that they, if this is a, Munton's is made by in, in England, right? So um, they miss the mark a little bit on what an American style light beer tastes like. Oh, however, hang on a second, I'll be right back. Now how I can do, make this beer taste really nice though is uh, with a little splash of Cascades hop water. Oh yeah, baby. Tell you what, little Cascades, and this becomes a treat beer. Treat beer. Cascades, love them. You can go back a few videos and you can see where I made the hop water. Ooh. Now that's, that's good beer. Um, that's good beer. Now let's see what I actually brought you here to show you today. One second. Okay, you ready for it? You ready for it? You ready for this? Here we go. Boom. What is it you say? Let's take a look. This is the Steel Gen Fermentation Chamber 2.0. And yes, that's a real cow skull found it in a field. Um, if you can see, the here's the thermostat. Now, you'll go back and see on my other vids where I made the, I, I um, modified this thermostat to be a temperature controller for a fermentation chamber. And it's attached to a fan. I will show you that. And I made my original prototype of the fermentation chamber out of 5 8 inch foam board, which worked fine, but it was a kludge and it didn't get down any lower than 61. It's the lowest I could possibly get it. So let's uh, let's try to get you a little closer picture of that um, of the thermostat. Here's the thermostat. I don't know if you can see what it's reading. One moment. Can I take you off the tripod? Well, let's not do that. It's reading 55, folks. <laughs> and this is an igloo cooler. It's like 165 quarts, 156 liters. Craigslist is your friend, folks, if you keep an eyeball on, on Craigslist. But the beauty of this is I've got the guts of my fermentation chamber stuff right here. When this temperature goes above this 55 mark, the little fan will kick on. 
if it will lose the temperature so the fan will kick on. <laughs> this igloo cooler just keeps its temperatures. It's not even going to drop. Okay, I guess I'll have to uh, manually turn the fan on so you can at least see it. It'll come on when I open the real lid. There's the fan. Sorry for the clock chiming in the background. So, so the fan's mounted to the lid and it goes down and it is over the top of ice. And in this, this scenario, I am using two and a half gallon frozen ice jugs. And I can reach right down there in this cubby hole and change the ice out so I don't have to open up the entire chamber. Seals tight. The electrical wire I've got for the fan, I've got coming out of the back of the, the thing and it, the chamber and it goes over here. See, it's got the little uh, transformer and it's plugged into an extension cord into the wall. So what we have going on in here is two fermenters. Um, and this one's actually a lager. So that's why, as you can see, I can hold lager temperatures now. The electricity for the fan comes in from the back. I drilled a hole and brought the electricity up here and to the thermostat. Drilled the hole through here, ran it to the thermostat. The wire for the fan comes here and goes up to the thermostat. And the thermistor, the temperature probe, comes down from the thermostat and goes to whichever fermenter I want to. And right now I've got it attached to the side of this logger. So that's, that's what there is to it. I filled the holes that I drilled with plumber's putty and covered them with this nice secure white tape for protection. There you have it. So now the, I can't, I don't know if you can see it, but the I wonder if I can zoom Now, on since that. I opened the lid, the thermostat is reading 58. And the fan, if I show you, can I show you in the same shot? I cannot. But the fan now is on. And we can watch the temperature drop. Now it's 57. It will shut the fan off when the temperature reaches 54. And it'll kick the fan back on when the temperature is 56. There's 56. I guess I can prove to you that the fan is on. Oh, you can actually see the little light. Oh, that's the show. Show and tell. See, the little fan is on. Over to the thermostat. 57. So this um, this is a far better fermentation chamber. It's low to the ground, so if I had gotten a chest freezer, which was an option I considered, I would have to lift those very heavy fermenters up high enough to get them over and down into the chain into the uh, chest freezer. Or if I got an upright, they are prone to letting the, the cold out when you open them. And you also have to watch. It's hard to get a cheap upright that doesn't have the uh, coils in the shelves themselves, so you can't remove them, so you can't use them for fermentation. So uh, the other option I have is the inherited refrigerator here that I've been keeping beer stuff in. And that's going to be something for lots of experimentation down the road. And so the temperature is dropped, it's dropped to 55 now. But again, you know, I don't have to open the main lid to change the ice. I can just open the small, the small trap here. I just open that to change the ice out. So the only time I ever have to open the door is to see, um, is to get the fermenters out to 
transfer them into the kegs. So we're waiting here for the temperature to drop to 54 and shut the fan off. But that's it. I'm very pleased with this. Again, Craigslist is your friend if you're looking for one of these. You can sometimes find them on eBay, but they want even more than they do at uh, Costco and other places. This sells at Costco for $80. There, the fan turned back off. If I open the door, <laughs> I'll probably let it up thing out where enough coldness out where the fan will come back on. But I can show you now that the fan is off. So okay guys, it's still Jen out. I hope you enjoyed seeing my fermentation chamber 2.0. I'm very, very pleased with it. This is gonna be perfect for a long, long time. I just know it. Have a home brew today. And remember, if you get a, if you make a beer that's not very tasty, put a little hops water in it. And then you'll have something fantastic. Mm. Love them cascades. So next time guys, still Jen out. Bye, rate, comment, subscribe. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>